sources for Department of Public Welfare, Evangelist Lester Roloff and the Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises Incorporated, operators of six homes for people in trouble, were told by the court they would have to obtain a license from the state in order to continue these ministries of reaching wayward boys and girls for Christ. Believing that licensure means control and headship over God-ordained ministries, Brother Roloff gave an emphatic no, and the battle of separation of church and state was underway. The decision was made to stand, stand firm against the state coming in and taking over the homes while removing the girls and boys to state-operated juvenile shelters and penal institutions. In less than four days, preachers began arriving in Corpus Christi saying they were determined to stand, stand with God and obey Him rather than an unrighteous law passed by man. On June 18, 1979, a rally was held at the People's Baptist Church with more than 3,000 in attendance. The Christian Alamo was now under siege and for one week, four to 600 preachers along with hundreds of parents and friends stood firm to protect the church against the unlawful encroachment of the state. We go now into the main auditorium of the People's Church where Brother Roloff is pastor. Four times in the Bible, never did they mean more than now. The Holy Spirit said, put it in. Now the just shall live. And I'm glad for the privilege of living by faith. I care not today what tomorrow may bring. I know Jesus. the news media and may I remind you my precious friends that in your hands almost rests the destiny there's only one power greater than the news media and that's the power of God in this audience tonight packed and jammed in this auditorium is the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I'm wondering tonight as we begin this service after more than six years of solid battle. And may I remind you, I did not start the fight. I was not a public figure. You don't bring a public figure out of the cow pen. And a lot of the public figure that they made out of me, I did not enjoy. But I'd like to remind the news media, you'll give an account to the same God I'll give an account. well I found out what I said to Mimi Crosley and to the other reporter that came I said are you a Christian and they said no I said then you'll never be able to understand what we're doing so I put the news media on guard tonight unless you know Jesus you can't understand what he's doing around here our Lord will return to this earth one of these days. Our Lord will
Those of you who are visiting with us, uh, we may make um, a little racket, but it won't hurt you. Uh, we don't have one pistol in the auditorium unless the devil's crowd brought it. Our guard at the gate doesn't have a sign of a pistol, but we do have the sword. And this is what the battle's all about. Let's just sing Get the News. All right, all right. Raise it up when it comes time. Get the news. recognize tonight uh, the preachers that are here. I'd like for every preacher in the auditorium, pastor, evangelist, I'd like for you to stand. I'd like to get a good picture of all of you. If you stand to your feet quickly, all the preachers. There's something wonderful happening in America that the average citizen knows nothing about. And that something wonderful is not being shown to the press, the television cameras. But there's a great move of God going on in this country that most people know little or nothing about. I've been a fundamentalist for a long time. I've been on the fundamental scene for a long time. I can recall when our buildings or storefront buildings brush arbors, tents, or maybe in the basement or an attic of a rented building. But something wonderful has happened. The fundamental churches are now the largest in most of the cities of our country. There was a day when the fundamental church had a choir that was composed of two old codgers and three draft dodgers, wing ding ding some little ditty. But now our choirs sing proper music and they sing well. There was a day when fundamentalist preachers used to split their infinitives and hang their gerunds and dangle their participles, but now fundamental preachers seem to use good grammar. We have our schools. We have our nice buildings. We have our, our large church plants. Fundamentalists, in a sense, are living on Main Street today. I can recall when you couldn't find a fundamental preacher whose socks matched his tie, and it was rather difficult to find one whose socks matched each other. But something wonderful is happening today. Do you know that fundamentalists have stood and are standing to the extent that if the largest church at this moment in the state of, the, of, of, of Florida is an independent Baptist church? Did you know that same thing could be said about South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Maine, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Missouri, and other states. There's something wonderful going on. And what's happening is this. Great soul-winning churches are being built. And these great soul-winning churches are building wonderful Christian schools who stand for that which is right. And now instead of being pushed back in a corner, a man who stands for God and for the Bible and for the faith once for all delivered to the saints and for the old time fundamental position and the old time religion is no longer alone he has others to stand beside him and to stand with him I was reading in a big New York City newspaper recently a man who was not a Christian said that the largest most powerful influence politically by any religious body in America today is the independent fundamental group now, what's happened? God's people have stood. God's men have stood. Giants have risen. Giants like 
Lester Olaf, the man who has stood alone, if need be, but he stood. He stood for right, for what he thought was right. He's been in the forefront of the battle. And across this land, there are thousands and thousands of men who are standing, perhaps not in the limelight such as is our brother Olaf, but men who in neighborhoods and cities and villages and towns and hamlets and countrysides all across this land are standing. They'd rather be right than popular. They'd rather be right than accepted. They'd rather be right than accredited. They'd rather be right with God than be applauded by the world arrangement. And thank God for these soldiers who are standing. And thank God that there are those who lead us who through these years have given us the example of standing. I think of the Christian Law Association. I think of David Gibbs, the attorney, and his co-workers. I think of the nearly three schools, fundamental Christian schools a day being started in this country. I think of these preacher boys coming from these new colleges and these older colleges that are standing for the faith going up and down the length and breadth of this nation building great soul winning churches and going house to house and knocking on doors and bringing back the old time gospel to our country. You see, something was lost many, many generations ago that has been rediscovered. And that rediscovery is that God's people are supposed to do the work. It's not a priest standing behind a pulpit or a preacher uh, performing behind a pulpit to some spectators, but it's a man of God who says... I'm doing it, and this is the way to do it, and you join me in doing it. And across this land, a great crowd of people are scattered abroad everywhere preaching and teaching the Word of God. And they're standing. They're standing because they have convictions. They're also standing because it can be said of Evangelist Lester Roloff, my good friend of almost the third of the century. He stood. These are girls from the Rebecca home. They have come here from all over America, including Hawaii and the West Indies. Along with the young boys from the anchor home at Zapata, Texas, they are told they cannot stay. Formerly drug addicts, rebellious, runaways, prostitutes, rock and roll enthusiasts, these girls have now given their lives to Christ, and as you see, are happily singing praises unto our Lord. Thousands of Americans feel, as Brother Olaf does, that these homes should not be closed and that these precious girls and boys be turned back out onto the streets without guidance and supervision. And so, as news spread that the homes were ordered closed, preachers, parents, political leaders, and friends came to stand up for these ministries. Among them was Texas State Representative Clay Smothers of Dallas. Who's going to take the kids if they close down this place? Who are, DHR going to take this man's kids? DHR? What can DHR do with these children? These children can teach DHR a heck of a lot. They can teach them about decency, honesty, and morality. They can teach them about citizenship. They can teach them about pride. They can teach them about Christianity, and they can teach about this.
From South Carolina, Marine Lieutenant Cleve McClary, who gave much of his body and suffered through 26 major operations fighting in Vietnam. His lovely wife, Deanna, who stood by his side, also came to stand with our girls. Girls, y'all know what's happening. I'm already filling up just looking at you. I love y'all so much. I have just spent the day with them, and they are just so precious. You know, most of them told me today, you know, they said, we're not what we want to be, but thank God we're not what we were. Amen. And I think that's so beautiful. I was just thinking as I was listening to all the men talk and looking out at these beautiful faces and these precious girls, thinking of the time that I shared with them today. And the things that they told me and the love that they have in their heart and they are learning something so important here they're learning what it's like to be a lady yeah. they're not criminals they are young women yeah. learning yeah. how to be young women yeah. and how into, how to live in the world today as young christian women yeah. with the right moral standards yeah. the right beliefs the right dress code they're yeah. precious and i love y'all and you know it don't you yeah. Yeah. You know, I just want to share this verse for y'all. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. I just wish I had years to spend with you, because I love you that much, and Cleve and I do. We care about you, and I think you can see that other people care also. And now I'd like to introduce my wonderful husband, a real Christian warrior. A man really dedicated to his country, but above all, to his God. Amen. To you, dear Cleve, I write this with pride. For it's men like you fighting side by side Amen. that make this world a better place to live. But oh, what a price you had to give. From hippies and yippies and draft dodgers too, I'm sure it made fighting lonely and blue. We can't replace your eye or your hand of the miserable days you had in Japan. But one day there will come on this lonely shore a Savior so great who will say, Suffer no more. This, this world will end all of its worry and strife. And to you, dear Cleve, there will be an eternal life. <laughs> Folks, this is the kind of mother, the kind of wife that Dr. Roloff is producing in this home. Yes, sir. Amen. In this world of give and take, there are not enough people willing to give what it takes. Amen. I thank God for folks like you that will come so far like you Amen. have today and take a stand. And be willing to give what it takes for the freedom that we know and are willing to die for in America tonight. Yeah. My country Representative of the pastors who came to stand were those who had been in similar conflicts with the state in their own various localities. Many, like Brother Roloff, had gone to jail for their convictions that only Christ can be head of the church and that the church is subject only to Christ, not the state. Greg Dixon, pastor of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple, remarked that what took place this historic week was a long, hard look at the old-fashioned doctrine of separation of church and state. Licensure means control, or at least authority with a licensing power over the licensee. 
there's no question but that the church ordained of God is licensed by divine authority of the Word of God and not the state. Brother Roloff asked me in my meek and timid way to deliver a little discourse this evening, and uh, so I said I'd be glad to. <clears throat> Licensure is wrong. Amen. It's sinful. Amen. It is a method of control Amen. in socialistic and communistic right. states yeah. all over the world. Amen. And unless we have some people that have the backbone to stand while there's time to stand, we're going to lose our freedoms in short order. We are rekindling a historic spirit, a scriptural spirit, and what I'm saying, they're not going to hang a license on my wall. More than six years ago, the Department of Welfare from Austin came to Corpus and spent five days, Monday through Friday. My lawyer, a precious friend, came to my office. It seemed like it was five o'clock or something in the afternoon. The day was done. He said, Brother Lester, I've got a piece of paper I want you to sign at Artesia Hall in Houston somebody died but they seem to have forgotten that that was not particularly a Christian home but it was a licensed home and the child abuse happens to be found in licensed homes you will not find child abuse in a Christian home Christians are not mean people. They're kind people. And uh, he said they're gonna they're closing all of them. And said, Brother Olaf, let's buy some time. They'd worked out an agreed judgment and said, Would you go ahead and sign it right here, Brother Olaf? Sign it, and that'll get us some more time. They're gonna close you. And oh, what a horrible thought that was. They're gonna close you, and you'll be out of business. You won't have a girl's home. And so I signed my name to that document. And that's where the trouble started. I signed away my birthright. I just signed an agreement that I would try to get or be willing to try to get a license to operate the homes. I never knew what that signature would bring. Had I known, I'd have chopped my own arm off before I'd have signed it. After a few days, I said to Brother Harry, I said, I, I don't want that license. I can't have it. My conscience will be gone. And I said, the book that I promised to go by 40 years ago and more, it will not be my rule for faith and practice if I accept the state rules. No man can go by the Bible and state rules at the same time. They're poles apart, boy. And so he said, uh, I said, go appeal that thing. Just go appeal it. I mean, go tell them I don't want it. I can't have it. There's no place in my life I can take a license from the state. I, I'd be untrue to Jesus, his lordship, the administrator of the Holy Spirit, and I'd be untrue to my Bible, and Jesus would not be Lord. And I said, and he said, all right, if that's what you want me to do. He came back and he said, Brother Lester, it's too late. I said, what do you mean too late? He said, you only have 10 days to appeal and a great judgment. And it's too late. And that's been the tormentor and the albatross around my neck for all these years. When we went to Judge Dunham in this city, First of all, my lawyer, uh, Brother Charles Lowry, said, Judge, could we have prayer? Brother Wolof will lead us in prayer. He declined the offer. And then we said, second, could we get a ruling on the Constitution? And he said, no, sir, I'm not going to give a ruling on the Constitution. And from that day until this, I've seen nothing but kangaroo courts and miscarriages of justice. I've never had the privilege of 12 American men or women sitting in a jury box to just study the facts in the case. Never. 
I've never had a ruling on the Constitution. They've never allowed me. They don't allow me to be tried in Corpus Christi. I have to go 200 miles. That's further than you can subpoena a witness to appear. And so, I find myself tonight at the end of the legal trail. This, tonight at midnight. And I'm going to raise some questions. And then I'm going to seek to answer them. Tonight at midnight, <coughs> death is to be set in over on all of this work. There are three homes or three schools that's to die tonight at midnight according to the judgment of Charles Judge Charles Matthews Court. The Park Avenue Day School has had its 34th graduation. It's dead at midnight tonight. Where mothers and dads have wanted to put their children through the years. Our little buses have crossed this city taking children to the Park Avenue Christian Day School. But it goes because it doesn't have a license and never will have a license. Amen. The mothers and dads will not have their children on our lovely playground, air-conditioned school building, or anything else with the lovely old-fashioned wonderful teachers that have been teaching many years. The second death will take place at Zapata, down in the ranch country, where we had the most blessed graduation I've ever seen, with maybe 200 awards given to the boys that had come, and in just nine months or ten, turned into wonderful young citizens, and fine and wonderful singing Christians. And yet, tonight at midnight, the demise will have to take place. Next door to this church, the loveliest dormitory, $1 million worth of dormitory. Wall-to-wall -wall carpet and almost wall-to-wall -wall girls. But tonight at midnight means the end of a blessed ministry if the state is to have its way. We talk about inspection. We had 14 assistant attorney generals here, plus the governor, and plus the attorney general sitting on this platform, commenting, admitting that we were doing a great work. Finest homes, finest facilities, healthiest girls, happiest looking people, and they said these homes must continue. When I went to Austin at the invitation of our governor, he said to me in his office with Mr. Mark White and one of our lawyers, he said, Brother Olaf, and in his uh, sweet and precious way, the governor said, Brother Olaf, there's something in the Bible somewhere that says that you ought not to swallow a camel and strain at a gnat. And he said, Brother Olaf, as much as I said, Governor, that gnat that you was talking about is the biggest gnat I've ever heard of. I said, that's my conscience. That's my obedience to Jesus. And I said, as I raised this old book up, I said, when I take a license, this book will go in the first garbage can. And this old preacher, with his hair just about gone, will walk out and never preach again. And I said, you may not understand, but when I can't put my Bible first in Jesus, Lord, Go by the Holy Spirit and obey Him. I said, I'll never preach again. The governor looked at me, and as best I remember, he said, I understand. And folks, that's what the battle's all about. Now then, you say, what you going to do, Brother Olaf? We plan to keep on keeping on. The question could be raised, have you ever thought about whether you're right or not? Let me share with you quickly. I believe I could say as humbly as I know how to say, and I know he's listening, if God is right, I'm right.
If Christ is right, I'm right. If the Holy Spirit is right, I'm right. If this old book is right, I'm right. If the Constitution's right, I'm still right. If the church is right, I'm right. If God's people and all the preachers that are here tonight, if they're right, I'm right. We believe alike. And all these folks have come to say, Brother Olaf, we want you to just keep on standing. Now then, you'd say, what can be done? What I've said to everybody. A preacher called me who has a license. He said, what can I do? I said, surrender your license. Don't talk about it, just give it back to him. Man called me bawling and squalling. He said, Brother Olaf, They've taken my license away from me, and I can't get it renewed. I said, write them a thank you letter. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If the preachers had done seven years ago what they're doing now, Amen. the battle would have been over in less than 12 months. I'd have never gone to the Nueces County Jail. Yeah. I've never been sentenced to jail three times in the city where I've lived more than 35 years. You say, what's your crime? I haven't put the legal sign up on the wall. That's what they have to put up in Russia. Your news media, if you all had the sense you ought to have, I'll guarantee you one thing. You'd go ahead and fight the battle for us because you're not going to own your own television station. The government, the doctors are quitting the medical ministry because they know they have no freedom left. Right. The farmers are discouraged because they sold their birthright for a mess of state parties. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of pastors have lost their conscience and can't do anything but make a speech or bring a little devotional yeah. because they lost their conscience from it. If God be God, serve Him! Why yeah. hold you between two opinions? The state let her run her own institution, but let the church run it. If the fruit yeah. makes us right, we're right. Amen. I want something that works. Yeah. And but I want to tell you. I could never let the DHR in here because they don't have any standards. There's nothing Christian about DHR. That D could stand for depraved. I mean, we might as well face it. You'd say, where'd you get that? Well, I notice here where Mr. P. Young, the Vice President and Director of Human Resources, Suite 474 West Century Building, San Antonio, Texas, said E-O-E-M-F-H, that's equal opportunity, male, female, H, that means homosexual. Yeah. Yeah. I can never endorse the, the uh, organization, uh, the DHR, that recognizes homosexuals and lesbians. Yeah. That's sin. Yeah. God burned some cities off of the map when they tried to rape heaven, and you know it. The DHR is not spiritual. They're not scriptural. They have no Christ. They have no Bible. They have no God. They have no hope. They have no morals. They have nothing. And the quicker we run it out of this country, the better off we'll be. Listen, you know who the lawbreakers are? The people that have ignored the Word of God. They call this brainwashing. You know who the, the, the lawbreakers are? They're the people that have completely ignored the Constitution of the United States. Did you know 
The, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or the exile thereby. Reckon what happened to that? Yeah. 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 Come on. And so as we close the service tonight, as your day, so shall your strength be. Amen. We ask God's people to pray. Some of the preachers said today, Brother Olaf, let's form a line with the Bible in our hand. Not a gun, not a pistol, not a stick, not a rod of violence. Let's take the old book and just stand and line up and let them break through the Bibles in order to get the girls. The second line of defense would be the parents who gave life to their children and brought them here and say, we're not going to fight, we're not going to hurt anybody, but y'all will have to walk over mother and daddy to get my little girl. I'm asking you not to do it. Leave them where we put them. Is there anything un-American about that? Is there anything that would bring this old flag down for us doing like that? Don't you believe this old flag with this red, white, and blue, don't you believe it was raised by men? Yes, sir. Amen. Dear friends, if the pilgrim forefathers and the Mayf- if they were right, we're right. Yes, sir. If Paul Revere was right, that midnight, I'm right. If George Washington was right, I'm right. If Patrick Henry was right, I'm right. If Roger Williams was right, if James Madison and, Jane and, and Stonewall Jackson, if they were right, Surely we must be right. Yes, Somebody's changed in this country. But oh, listen, this old book never changes. And I close the message tonight. I know victory's got to come. And I know it's not God's will for these homes to close. And I'm not going, dear friend, to just give up. And I'll never surrender my conscience. I'll never trade off what I've got for a little license. I cannot. Unscriptural un-American and unspiritual and unworkable and unreasonable and so let's stay with the old book. Let's stand together. Evening and morning and at noon Yes. And so they stood For four days in the sweltering heat and hot sun of South Texas, the preachers stood, protecting the church and the girls from being taken over by the state. On Friday afternoon of that same week, an agreement was reached between Brother Olaf and the Attorney General that permitted Brother Olaf to place the girls in private Christian homes of his choosing rather than turn them over to the state of Texas. He would close the Rebecca and Anchor home while reorganizing to bring all his ministries under the direct auspices of the People's Baptist Church, Incorporated, thus satisfying the court in at least the agreed judgment with Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises. The girls were sent away. Some have already disappeared from their parents' homes to go back onto the streets and into sin. The Human Resources Task Force was dispersed. They came at one time during the week within three minutes of confrontation with the preachers, but Texas Governor Bill Clements stood firm and ordered them not to break through any human barricades, nor were they allowed to enter the church where the girls were. The girls were safe as long as they were in the church. The following week, the Department of Human Resources representatives visited the Rebecca home to satisfy themselves that Brother Roloff had indeed complied with the ruling of the court. Mr. Johnson, what what exactly are you planning on doing today? We're going to talk to Reverend Roloff and his people right now. As Brother Roloff pointed out in his message, it was like inspecting or monitoring God and the work of Christ divinely led by the Holy Spirit. All these ministries were built without tax monies, They belong to God's people and churches and pastors all over the world who have supported and prayed for their continuance. The inspection was made. The girls were gone, all but five. Brother Roloff had been led to believe that he could keep at least five and that these girls somehow could keep the home alive until the others could be returned. But in the end, during this inspection, he was told he could not keep even these five. 
They would be permitted to roam the streets or stay any place they chose except at the Rebecca home. They would not be allowed to stay at Rebecca even if they chose of their own free will. As the inspection led to the Rebecca Christian Academy adjacent to the Rebecca dormitory, Brother Oloff was interviewed at the trophy case by local news reporter Mia Squilla of Channel 10. As we look at the trophies, but that's not the main trophies. The main trophies are the, the girls. Where are they today? Cleve McCleary was right. The day they closed these down, the saddest day in American history. And if America puts up with this, and if Texas allows this, we're gone. The nation's gone. Texas is gone. The judgment of God must fall on a state wicked enough to abort the hopes of little girls. And 200 of them are gone, and now then they told me I had to take the last five out a while ago. They did tell you that, Brother Roloff? Yes, Rolo? sir. Said they've got the, all of them go. And so the, the other five, you can take a picture, and they're packing now, and that sweeps are completely clean. There won't be one girl in this building tonight. Why is that ruling, Brother Roloff? That's what they say the ladies rule. In 1976, they changed it. They'll be changed next year. They change them all the time. There's nothing Christian about it. There's nothing American about it. There's nothing scriptural. There's nothing uh, constitutional about it. They're the lawbreakers. <laughs> They've broken every law of dear. What if George Washington were to come back on his old horse, Lexington? What if Paul Revere were to ride through this country tonight? What if Patrick Henry were to come back saying, give me liberty? or give me death, and yet we got death out of it, see? And yet we'd never give in to the humanistic program of the state. Infidel uh, to the core. No God, no Christ, no Bible. This is the book. I'm not discouraged, but I'm brokenhearted. Anybody would be. Well, they said that in, by law you could have five girls, and, and did you realize this was going to happen today? No, I didn't. I thought, I thought we could have the five, but... Uh, they they waited to pop that on me till it got in here, and uh, you, you see if there's any tears flowing on their faces. You see, ask them if they prayed last night before coming. How do you feel about having them in your home? Having who? The state worker. That's all right. I'm not mad at them. They're tools of the state. They're the. Uh, they just have to do a job. See, I mean. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Oh, I wouldn't wear their shoes for $10 million a minute. I wouldn't do it. What are you going to do now? Just pray and believe God, and there'll be a better day. There'll be a better day. God didn't lead me to build all these buildings and fly millions of miles day and night and, and not keep on. But, Brother Roth, didn't they, didn't they say, didn't, weren't we talking about reconstructing your, the structure of your school? Yes, we'll be working on that, but today's the day. This is, the, I mean, across the street is Memory Gardens. Over here is the Garden of Memories. That's all we've got left today, is remembering the happy void. Can you imagine this being empty? The dormitory being empty. Millions and millions of dollars that the government didn't put one penny into, not one cent that they put in, into it. The world, the whole world, I hope Mike Wallace will tell us somebody ought to take a stand. I make no apology for the tears. There's no, there's no way not to weep over this. Miss Cameron's almost a dead little lady today. Her husband drove all night. Going into Mississippi, and, and Governor Finch says, welcome to Mississippi, Kentucky. It says, but Lord, we make you a Kentucky colonel. Welcome to... And yet, how could I take all this property? I'll never leave it. I believe the Lord would have us to use it. Somebody's going to be waked up and realize that they're wrong about it. And that's all I, I know to say. Just ask the people to pray for us, and we're going to continue to trust the Lord and believe that he's going to open the way uh, for us to have the homes again. We've met, I guess, all their requirements today. Six long years of battle and um, uh, trying to meet unconstitutional. And there's no way for these homes to be closed under the Constitution, under the Word of God. Our pilgrim forefathers, they came over for just 
John Bunyan, 12 years in jail over a matter who wouldn't take a license. The only thing that keeps me from being a hero with the bunch that's out here now is that little piece of paper, the legal sign saying this is a state-operated home. We have to do exactly what they say to do. That's the thing. Brother Roth, you say this, would you consider this a victory by the state? If it is, it's very temporary. There can be no victory in sin and wickedness and wrong. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin's a reproach. We're living under a solid reproach today in Texas. Saddest day in Texas history. What if um, Bowie and Crockett and, and Travis, what if they were to come back and just walk in this learning center, walk through that lonely dormitory tonight and try to find one little girl in one of those big empty rooms? The nicest equipment, the nicest facilities in America today, and the largest for people in trouble. The International Year of the Child, International Year of Murder for our children. And that's the story. And that's the only way you can put it. Well, this is what we did have left, and this is our last fight. And uh, Beth, I'll let you say a word, honey. Where'd you come from? New York City. I grew up over there in the ghettos, and. All I learned how to do was fight and take drugs. I never did learn anything in school. I just rebelled against any authority. I hated my parents before I came here, and I ran away a lot of times, and, and it was just terrible. I just thought there was nothing to it. I tried to take my life away a lot of times. And when the last time I ran away from home, I went to South Carolina. My mother sent me there to my sister's house because I, I realized I needed help myself. And when I got there, I met this lady, and she told me about these homes. Well, the Rebecca girls that happened to be over there on tours, and they were giving their testimony, and I was just listening to them, and I was crying my heart out because I just, I just wish I could be like one of them. And then she asked me if I wanted to come here, so I said, yes, I came here my own free will. And when I first came here, of course, I didn't hate it because I wasn't safe. I mean, I hated it because I wasn't safe. And um, I just didn't like it at all. But a week after, Brother Rolla was preaching in church, and I gave my life to the Lord. And ever since then, it's been a big change in my life. I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. Mm -hmm. And this, this is my father here. This is my father. And this is my mother here. This is the only parents I ever had in my life. These are the only people that give love to anybody, that are willing to take anybody, no matter how they are. These are the only people that will care for anybody. I love these people, and I love these homes, and I just wish these wet, fair people could just get off my back and leave these homes open. And instead of closing these homes, they ought to make build more, and yes. they don't just take a big load out of the cup's back sure. and, uh, and out of people's back. And this is a great man. This is the best man in this whole wine world. And all these people, they just have love. They care for us. They sit with us, and they talk with us, and we have a home that we just have authority. We, all, we learn how to obey here. We learn how to be a lady. We learn how to just love everybody, how to... I love a whole bunch of things that I didn't even imagine of in the world. Amen. I love you, Brother Rolla. I love you, too. Where are y'all going to go? I don't know. I'm just, I want to stay here. My year will be up next month, so I'm staying here as a worker. <laughs> Brother Rolla, where do you think they're going to go? I do not know. But they'll never be turned on the street. That's right. And they'll never go to TYC. That's right. They're not, they're not criminals anymore. That's right. The whole country needs to know. There's going to be a drastic change. I believe God's going to visit judgment on somebody right. within the next 12 months. You wait and see. Do you, think, going to be... do you think Mark White reneged on his agreement with you? I'm not making any comment about Something that. Something happened here that, that you I, weren't counting. I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not going to judge anybody or condemn anybody. I have nothing but love but uh, disappointment in... Uh, uh, losing these five, at least these could kind of keep the dormitory fires burning, you know, and we thought we could keep five. Our lawyers thought we could keep five, but according to some of the late rules and regulations, you see the state is making its bid for all the children. Parents don't own them anymore. The church doesn't own them anymore. They belong. See, that's just like Russia. Yeah, uh, yeah that's right. The, the parents are just incubators to hatch out servants of the state and soldiers of the state and we're just about a half a step away from being taken over completely. When they get our children, 
and then they get the liberty and freedom of the churches, nobody but a modernistic preacher would accept the license because it's unconstitutional, right. un-American, unscriptural, and you don't find any of the licensed homes taking what we take. That's right. Who'd want this little girl from the ghettos of New York? Who'd want these that have been murderers? Nobody. Okay, even if it means never having any girls in this home again, will you not take a license? You're asking a silly question yeah. and wasting your breath and my time. Yeah. I'm sorry, no. I don't understand. This is supposed to be the year the children leave. Yeah. They want to stay here and they have to leave it all. They let us do anything. Why can't they let us stay here if we want to? Yeah. They let us stay on the streets. They let us do all... Oh, sure. Uh, 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 they could all run the streets yeah. right now. Yeah, they let us stay here on all free will. They, they can choose any home they want except this one. Yeah. Uh, they stay home. They don't get help. I know they don't. You know what? You know what? The cops told my mother in New York, my sister, she wants to... My mother wanted to put her in a stay home. And you know what they told her? My personally, that they, they, that she put that if they were if they were her, they wouldn't put her, they would just leave her on the streets. That's how, that's how bad the stay homes are. Mm -hmm. And I've seen friends of mine, a whole bunch of friends that they go to stay home. And you know what? They come out they come out seven times worse. Yeah. That's why they give. They don't have no discipline over there. Girls wearing blue jeans and smoking and everything. That's nothing. That's not worth it. Yeah. That's not, this is the only home that's the yeah. end for any teenager, for anybody that needs help. They get them here. We do get them. Yeah. This is, man, these people, they're going crazy. Have you got faith enough to believe that these homes will continue? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I do with all my heart. Amen. Yes. All is quiet. The hallways no longer ring with laughter. Rooms are empty. No one's precious daughter sleeps in any bed. No praying and testimonies in the big living room. All is quiet at Rebecca and at the Anchor Home in Zapata. We desire your prayerful support as we still operate our two lighthouse homes for men and boys, the city of refuge for alcoholics and drug addicts, the helpers home for older girls and women, all located in Corpus Christi, our Bethesda home for girls at Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and the beautiful Peaceful Valley home for senior Christians and missionaries in the Rio Grande Valley. These are your ministries. Pray for them daily and support them as the Lord may lead. I'm glad the Lord gave me two wonderful promises in these dark times when he said, I'm going to turn this curse into a blessing, and I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Also, the children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the other, shall say again in thine ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these? Seeing I've lost my children. And I'm glad to take my stand with the mighty Christian patriot Patrick Henry, who three days after he saw a preacher beaten, and he died because he would not take a license, said with great compassion and tears, Is life so dear, our peace, so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. I'm glad that the God on the mountain is also the God in my valley. God on the mountain is still God in the valley When things go wrong He'll make them right Brother Roloff is still broadcasting daily on the Family Altar program heard on more than 170 radio stations. You may write him at Box 1177, Corpus Christi, Texas. Though Rebecca and the Anchor Home have been closed, we're expecting these homes to reopen soon under the new reorganization plan. Again, we desire your prayer.